chemistry studies matter. Matter is everything. Everything's made up of matter. You know, the lab bench, us, uh, the air around us that we can't see, it's all made up of atoms and molecules. And also chemistry has become so important in terms of our daily lives. If you're worried about what you eat, if you're worried about your health, if you're worried about um, pollution, if you're worried about uh, energy resources, it's all related to chemistry. I still, on walks, will stop and look at a strange looking flower for 10 minutes and marvel over what is this and why does it look that way? And sometimes that will start in uh, introductory bio class or in major biology or in natural history class. I see how much fun the students have in the garden looking at the different plants and whatnot and then when they go out there on a Friday morning to chase butterflies and try to catch different insects and it really carries forward because it is something very primal and basic to humans and I think we all benefit from exploring that and it really builds other curiosities and I think that's really the key to having a, a fun and exciting and satisfying life is following what you're curious about and learning more about it. Astronomy is a fantastic laboratory towards displaying how the universe, how the world around us functions. And if you can understand through the simplified nature of astronomy how to think scientifically, then you can take that into your daily life and you can start to make sense of things that you see around you. And once we understand uh, science, once we understand how to figure stuff out, we don't have to rely upon talking heads to tell us what's going on. We can figure things out for ourselves. At Pierce College, uh, the sciences have been strong uh, for a long period of time and uh, is reflected by our enrollments and also where our students transferred to and the careers they've gone into. The buildings we were in you know, were built in 1960 to 1962 and at that time uh, they fit the curriculum as it existed then. But as the decades went by, the building was working against the laboratories a great deal. A lot of the equipment we had couldn't be put away because it would not fit into the cabinets they were built for. We've outgrown our space in a lot of ways. Uh, even physically, the tables are a little low for students who have gotten much taller over the last 50 years. We have a harder time fitting students under the desks. It was only about 10 years ago that the campus was air conditioned, didn't even have air conditioning. The space is necessary because if we're going to evolve and we're going to keep up with the sciences and we're going to keep up with the community needs, we have to have state-of-the-art equipment. You cannot have state-of-the-art equipment in a bungalow. Every year the need became greater and greater to either totally redesign the buildings we were in or to create new ones that would fit uh, the curriculum as it exists now. We've been in uh, on the design of this building from the ground floor up. This was a long process. I think from beginning to end was almost 10 years. Each of us individually as a department had to think carefully about what we wanted and trying to project into the future about what's education going to be like 10 years from now and allowing for enough flexibility that we could make changes later on with the spaces. This building is really a complex structure. It, it's a building like a machine and it gets more complex um, perhaps because of the style of architecture that was decided upon. It's a clay mission tile roof. It's a traditional uh, Southern California architectural style. It's a large building. It's about 100,000 square feet. It's got single loaded corridors which uh, all open out onto the central courtyard. Each corner of the building has all the components that funnel all the various systems to the building, distribution systems, and it's zoned out that way. Uh, right now we're targeting a lead silver uh, for the building. We're targeting 30 percent better than code on the project, so that's additional lead points. And we're trying to strive to really get this building to be very energy efficient. The type of equipment that goes into each specific room varies greatly from room to room. One fascinating aspect of the project is it has a planetarium. It's the physics and planetary sciences department, so we have this 
beautiful planetarium. All of our astronomy classes are going to be taught in the, well, we call it a planetarium classroom. 15, 20 years ago, a planetarium was solely for the use of astronomy. Now, with this digital technology, we can show all sorts of things and get a wide view. So just the other day, we were showing different chemical models that were made. So 3D modeling can demonstrate the structure of these different chemicals and so forth to assist the chemistry or biology people in order to see what's going on. So there is, a, with this planetarium, is an outreach to the other sciences to see what use they can also get out of this room. We have a, a brand new separate astronomy lab classroom. We have our oceanography program, which is in one of the rooms downstairs, and we have a, this really vital geology program that is hugely expanded. We have um, two nice projection spaces where we can show PowerPoints. We have nice large whiteboards compared to a very small chalkboard that we had previously. And in addition to that, in this particular classroom, we have a smart board where we can electronically project the things that we're writing and we can go to one from one page to the next seamlessly. We can enlarge things, shrink things, show that there are different connections. I can turn objects just to demonstrate things better for the students. As a teaching facility, uh, this particular building is more advanced than what you'll find at any of the universities. And that's primarily because, as you can see in, in how large these laboratories are, this is quite a physical and financial commitment to student laboratories. And it is something the universities actually don't have the resources to do. Growing up on a farm, um, being around horses and a lot of different species, I realized that working with animals is the only choice for me because of the passion involved. I tried other things and this wasn't passionate about anything else besides working with animals. So I did some research and I'm here at Pierce College. We are in the brand new Center for the Sciences in the Veterinary Technology Building. The clinical lab is the center of our building and that's where all of the labs are taught, all the hands-on portion of the classes is taught. It's a very large, spacious, well-equipped room. It has 12 workstations with a uh, demonstration table in the center and allows the students to work on live animals practicing their skills. We also have a uh, surgical suite, which has a uh, surgery room with two tables, a um, recovery room, and a surgery prep room. And it also has an observation deck, which allows the students to watch the surgery uh, as it's going on without actually being in the surgery room. We have a number of animal enclosure rooms. We have a dedicated lecture room for the RVT and pre-vet students. Uh, we have this library. We have kennel runs, we have exam rooms, as well as an entire lab with all the equipment that you need to do physical exams, things of that nature, basically. We have four chemistry labs, and each of them will hold a different class, different course. We teach our advanced classes, uh, organic chemistry and biochemistry. I'm taking Chem 60 for requirement to go to Chem 101 and several other chemistry classes are up to biochemistry because I'm a veterinary major. So Pierce offers all those classes. The labs are more spacious. There's less students per lab. It's a much more interactive space than the old spaces were. So that's a huge advantage just for allowing for better communication between instructor and student. The safety features in this lab are significantly improved from, from the old building. The fume hoods with the fans and the vacuums right above it when we're burning toxic chemicals and stuff. It just sucks it right up and, you know, takes it out to where it's not like polluting the, <laughs> the room and you're not like coughing over chemicals. And it's really cool because it uh, reduces environmental um, output of poisonous, you know, gases that we use in here. The smart classroom, while we're still learning it, it has been incredible. You pop in a DVD now. I don't have to run out, go to, you know, into a separate room to get a DVD player to set it up. You know, everything's right there for us, which is huge. For, for a professor, it's huge. When you study psychology, if you're cramped in space, you're not able to do as well, you're not able to express yourself as well, you're not able to take in and learn as well. So the opportunity to have more space 
proper equipment is a very positive thing for the program. In the life sciences department, you can find courses from introductory biology, which has a self-taught lab. Um, we have our majors biology program, which covers both organismal biology, molecular biology, and biotechnology. We just recently introduced a combination genetics and biotechnology course. We also offer natural history, and we have a wonderful marine bio program as well. My favorite part of learning um, microbiology and studying microbiology are the labs. Um, you get to see exactly what you learn in lecture come into life. When you congregate on an, in an experiment in a small room, it really feels tight. Here I can move around, we can collaborate on this side of the room, and I can shift on the other side of the room, and we can gather around these very large tables and students don't feel so confined, nor do I. One of my favorite features is the collaborative nature now of our whole science program. In fact, for that reason, the name turns out to be a good one, Center for the Sciences. The more we interact with each other, the more we're going to have opportunities to have our ideas cross. And those kind of happy accidents are what bring about huge changes in science and huge advances in what we can do to lessen our negative impact on the earth. And you just never know how that's going to come about. And I think that putting those disciplines together is just asking for good things to come out of it. <laughs>